Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Dev, where today we're continuing to work on our clown about vegetation versus the undead. Now, last time we continued to fill out our plant roster with the additions of the lily pad, the grave buster, the tango kelp, the doom shroom, and the marigold. A few of these additions would also require terrain specific tiles, so water, gravestones, and craters were also added. It was the first step in finally running out the last few unique plants in the game and would also set us up for today's eventual plan. And that plan, ladies and gentlemen, is to start fixing our mess of a game. The main goal for today is to convert our old way of handling plants to a more efficient grid-based system. This will include plant placement, placement restrictions, and the addition of a fog system. This switch will also include the implementation of tiles, which should not only improve things, but also give us more options for dynamic board layouts in the future. Sounds like a solid plan, and despite being slightly under the weather for this episode, let's not waste any more time and get to the coding. First up was redoing our mouse position and placement code, so that it would work with our brand new DS grid. As we've been doing in other recent grid-based projects, the room is broken down into cells, which will then be used to keep track of game data. So first, it was very important that the mouse's position was being tracked properly on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. Then, using the new position code, restrictions were added so the players wouldn't be able to place plants on the fence or concrete surrounding the play area. Now, it may not seem like much was changed here, but trust me, this is an important step. So, let's keep stepping forward. Back in the code, our newly created DS list was filled with default data for occupancy and fog states. I then quickly doodled up some kind of weird gray blob meant to represent fog and drew them into the level. Using a loop restricted to just the play area, if a cell is marked as foggy, a fog sprite is drawn in that space. I went with drawn sprites instead of tiles here because it was quicker and I don't think it'll impact performance all that much in the long run. And just to make sure that this worked properly, the fog state was temporarily randomized for each cell. The results were as expected with any cells marked as foggy now displaying a fog sprite in their space. So now that we had a basic fog working, there was still more grid based work to get to. An next sprite was created that will be used as a visual aid for placement restrictions. Similar to the fog, any cells in our grid marked as occupied will have the X sprite drawn in its space. Thus, while we work, we could now visually keep track of the cell occupancy states with ease. Speaking of which, back to the placement code, when a plant is placed on the board, the cell is then marked as occupied. Next, thanks to some macros, any plants that are destroyed would also reset their respective cells back to unoccupied. And thanks to the drawing of those ugly red X's, we could now see that our occupancy switching was on point with the creation and destruction of plants. So with that working, it was time to extend these restrictions back to the terrain which would see the return of, you guessed it, tiles. So if you've been watching recently, you know where this is going. The terrain sprites created last time have now been converted into tiles to make our job a little easier. And using our grid system, two rows of water tiles were drawn in the middle of the board and marked as occupied. A new set of enums were also added specifically for terrain tiles. Then in the plant creation code, if it is a lily pad, the cell it spawns in would be marked as unoccupied. Then in the destruction code, lily pads would reset their cell to occupied, which ended up working, kind of. After messing with it a bit, I realized that the code could definitely use some improvements. So first, the spawn code was moved to its own script. Next, instead of checking occupancy states, the code would first check if the plant being spawned was a lily pad. And if a water tile exists in the same cell, then placement was allowed. And if those conditions weren't relevant, then the normal occupancy state check was made. The code was then altered slightly to take into consideration other water-based plants like the tango kelp. And finally, the plant destruction code is altered. Instead of having specific plants do specific things, anytime a plant is destroyed, the cell data is updated. At the same time, the entire grid is checked, and if tiles and grid data don't match, for example, water is empty yet marked as unoccupied, the code then makes sure it's marked as occupied. In other words, our checks are no longer plant specific, but situational, which means occupancy states can basically be booleans instead of being set via enum. It also removes the the headache of needing more conditionals. 
And with that brings us to the end of today's session. Again, I was slightly under the weather here, so that's all I could get done in time. And for anyone curious, the reason that this episode took so long to get to was because, well, I wasn't a fan of how inefficient the code was getting. And so to improve it required working on other projects that would then help me learn what I needed to to continue. Also, I uh, totally expected Game Maker's uh, 2.3 update to be out by now, which would really help streamline a lot of our code. But, you know, at least at the time of this recording, that was clearly not the case. Anyway, we'll continue improving areas of our code moving forward, but for now, that'll do it for this episode of Let's Dev. So leave a like if you enjoyed the episode, subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already, and leave your thoughts on our progress in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.